From Studio 1A in Tampa, Florida, comes a talk show that really feels your pain and tells you like it is. We love America and all that freedom-loving Americans want to protect. Live from coast to coast and on your radio, it's For the People with Keith Allen. We'll help you survive. Mr. and Mrs. America, I am Keith Allen, and you're tuned to this Wednesday's edition of For the People on September the 6th, 2017, and we are preparing for Hurricane Irma as it slams into the Caribbean and the Caribbean islands as a Category 5 storm, Puerto Rico bracing for impacts, and I tell you, at uh, the wind speeds of 185 miles per hour, this is nothing to take lightly in Florida. Rick Scott spoke uh, earlier. We're going to listen to uh, some of that press conference. But if you know anybody in Florida, you want to make sure that they're checking in with you just to make sure that they got some kind of safety uh, plan together, some bug out plan, bare minimal, getting supplies and things like that. And everywhere that I've gone, uh, there's just no water. Um, though Rick Scott says, uh, you know, you can report, here's a phone number that you can call every Walgreens, every CBS, every gas station. Uh, you can buy Evian water. I wanted to make some coffee because I don't use the uh, city water for coffee here at the office. Evian water for 12 Evian waters, $25, $25. Uh, and the guy tells me at the Chevron, uh, this morning, he goes, that the premium water, but good water, they've been told. It's good water. Wow. 25, I mean, that's going to be a heck of a cup of coffee. Now, I already have water, okay? So don't, uh, <laughs> I'm not going to just be loading up on water uh, with Evian. Um, I have these five-gallon jugs for a water cooler, and I have three or four of them, so I'm going to fill all those up, and I already have some, uh, other water that uh, is not Evian. What do I have? Zephyr Hills. They have some of that. Desante. Um, and my favorite, if you if you had to hold me to it for bottled water, is Nestle Pure Life. I think that stuff tastes the best. But hey, it's all preference. It's all water. And if you know you don't want tap water, but people, man, are rushing to the stores like crazy around here, and I mean, we just don't know. Uh, until a few more days, exactly the exact turn. If it turns to the north, we know that's definitely going to hit Florida and nobody's taking any chance. Here's our governor here. I do the show from Tampa, Florida, in case you didn't know. Here is the governor of the great state of Florida, Rick Scott. Here he is. Mr. Scott. You can speak. to come near our state. Everyone must listen to their local officials. Listen to your local officials on the evacuations. Individuals with special needs will be evacuated from Miami beginning this morning. Miami-Dade County officials are also advising residents living in low-lying areas to start evacuating today. I cannot stress this enough. Do not ignore evacuation orders. Remember, we can rebuild your home, but we cannot rebuild your life. Real-time traffic information and evacuation routes is available at www.fl511.com. www.fl511.com fl511.com. At my direction, all tolls have been waived across Florida roadways. This should help families evacuate quickly and safely. We are preparing for Irma to directly impact our state, and while it's still too early to tell exactly where the storm will hit, it is incredibly important that all Floridians keep a close eye on this incredibly dangerous storm. Do not sit and wait for this storm to come. It is extremely dangerous and deadly and will cause devastation. Get prepared right now. Regarding the Florida National Guard, yesterday I activated 100 members of the Florida Air and Army National Guard to support with planning, logistics, and operations in preparation for potential impacts from Hurricane Irma. These 100 state members are stationed across the state right now, and air assets from the North Carolina National Guard are beginning hospital evacuations in the Florida Keys this afternoon. 
Today, I'm activating another 900 Guard members for a total of 1,000 by the end of the day to respond and prepare for Hurricane Irma. On Friday, all 6,000 remaining available National Guard members will be reporting for duty. I stand ready to activate additional Guard members throughout the week as needed. In addition, 13 helicopters and more than 1,000 tactical high-water vehicles are on standby. The Florida National Guard is coordinating with other states, and the National Guard Bureau is, in, is to ensure approximately 30,000 troops, 4,000 trucks, 100 helicopters, and air evacuation crews are ready to support our state. Regarding fish and wildlife, the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission is preparing search and rescue teams for potential deployment. Regarding utility providers, I have been, I have been in constant contact with Florida utility providers. They are already working on staging and asset allocation so they can re return power as quickly as possible following the storm. They are actually pre-positioning resources throughout the state and in neighboring states. We know from previous storms how incredibly important it is for power to be restored quickly. I will be talking with the utilities often throughout the day and I have urged county and city officials, including sheriffs and police chiefs, to reach out to their utility providers so we can all work together in response to Irma. Regarding shelters, if you are evacuating from the Keys, you can shelter at Florida International University. We are working hand in hand with the counties to ensure that shelters are available for other communities who may need to evacuate. There is absolutely no reason for anyone not to evacuate if you are ordered to, to do so. Shelters will be available and you should follow the directions of your local officials to go to the shelter that fits your needs. Families can go to www.floridadisaster.org slash information or dash info to learn where shelters are in your area. The state is staging supplies such as meals, shelter support trailers and water, the state logistic resource center in Central Florida for deployment as needed. We will be pre-positioning these goods once we have a better understanding of the path of the storm. The state is also establishing local points of contact with volunteer organizations to coordinate sheltering and feeding operations. The American Red Cross has also established a disaster relief operation in Orlando. Last night I spoke with U.S. Health and Human Services Secretary Tom Price. He told me that HHS has disaster medical assistance teams en route to Florida. These rapid response teams aid in the provision of medical care to those who need it after the storm. The Florida Department of Education is in contact with school districts, state colleges and universities. They will be receiving updates before, during and after the storm. To find out if your local school district is closing, please visit Florida uh, Department of Education website at www.fldoe.org. At this time, all school districts and colleges are monitoring Irma and her path. For any questions on school closures, please call your superintendent. Lake Okeechobee. I am in touch with the South Florida Water Management District and the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers to discuss Lake Okeechobee water levels and the Herbert Herbert Dyke. I will be speaking with them again later today. The U.S. Army Corps of Engineers and the South Florida Water Management District have begun lowering water levels in Lake Okeechobee as well as the surrounding canals and moving as much water as possible to tide and south through flood control structures throughout its flood control system in preparation for the storm. Routine inspections of the Hubert Herbert Dyke are taking place and additional inspections will begin once the lake approaches uh, 17 feet. The lake level is right now is 13.68 feet. We have seen reports on the news of grocery stores being out of water. Members of the media, we ask that you partner with us to identify areas of need and report any confirmed shortages to the State Emergency Operations Center by calling 850 Nine two one zero two one seven. Okay, we, we're not going to play the entire thing. It goes on for another eight to ten minutes. But I wanted to give you a little flavor. This is a very serious storm, folks. An historic Category Five storm um, that uh, very easily could hit us and has the potential, um, but could also go to the Gulf Coast. We don't know. But in Florida, we don't know if it's going to go to the East Coast, we don't know if it's the West Coast, and, and barrel over the entire state uncertainties, but nevertheless taking precautions and doing what we can. Uh, shelters are not a bad idea, but I liked how the governor said that, uh, you know, go to the website, see what shelter meets your needs. There are schools that are designated shelters. So there's a lot available. A lot of folks are going to try to tough it out of their homes. But if you're like right there on the water, right there in a flood prone area, and it looks very likely that it's going to do that. You just don't want to take the chance to end up like folks in Texas 
having to be rescued, you know, especially if there's going to be evacuation notices. I mean, we're planning to leave. If that's the case, we'll pack up, but we're ready to go just in case that they should do that. And there's the chance that that might happen. So, uh, and we'll let everybody know what happens to for the people uh, with the network and all that other stuff. Uh, we might have to do a best of program. I might have to do it from a boat, but we will make sure we keep you up to date as much as possible uh, when this happens. But this is real. This is real. Uh, a lot of people think that this has something to do with global warming. And some people, you know, they they subscribe to it. Al Gore, you know, he had this movie out several years ago, An Inconvenient Truth. But a very fascinating guy who is a climate scientist, his name is Roy Spencer. Uh, he's not buying into Al Gore's false claims. And he's got this new movie out that's called an erroneous, uh, well, he's just calling it erroneous uh, as we introduce an inconvenient sequel because it's very inconvenient, that's for sure. Um, yeah, we got some sound bites of Roy Spencer and why he's believing that this is just a bunch of crap. Um, you know, folks, I have had climatologists on, I've had scientists on from just all over the country. Um, through the years, and I've I've spoken to many of them. I, you know, I'm one of these these uh, realists that do believe that um, you know mankind doesn't help things. That's for sure. Here's Rory Spencer, though. Uh, God, you know, is it global warming? You know, what's going on here? Well, I think they've been going well. The president. Okay, that's not Roy Spencer. All right, let me know when you got Roy. Sp that's okay. Uh, we will get him up in just a second. Uh, you got him? Okay, here we go. Roy Spencer. Well, I've been following Mr. Gore since his first movie. Uh, and, in fact, I testified for him almost 30 years ago when he was a uh, U.S. senator. So I've been in this battle with Al Gore for, for a few decades now. And the latest movie I thought was just outrageous for the number of false claims and just erroneous information that he was trying to pass off on the public and so I decided to do something about it and and I whipped up a quick ebook in about 2 weeks okay. to respond. Yeah, somebody needs to <laughs> uh to put Al Gore in the right place and some of the information folks that you're about to hear about some of these inconsistencies of the inconvenient truth or inconvenient sequel. Roy Spencer uh is a climate scientist very noted and it's calling out a lot of BS, though he does speak some truth about uh, some truths about what we might be doing. But Al Gore is certainly fabricating the truth for his own personal gain. Not a surprise. Well, Al Gore's favorite technique is to show all kinds of things that happen in nature naturally and then blame them on mankind. So, for instance, uh, melting on the Greenland ice sheet that happens every summer but he makes it sound like it's it's due to us mm -hmm. uh, rising sea level in miami beach that is partly natural and it's partly because miami beach was built on reclaimed swamp land which is sinking just as fast as sea level has been rising for the last 150 years right. so there's just all of these examples of things that he claims are because of humans when in fact these are all things that happen naturally he claims there's uh, more severe weather, there is no evidence sure. of more severe weather. There you go. I mean, this is from a climatologist, somebody that that studies this. Um, the deal with Miami, it's on reclaimed swampland. It's been sinking ever since. They've been building on it, so it has nothing to do with rising sea levels, nor was Sandy anything to do with rising sea levels as well. I mean, these are experts in their field debunking all the crap for those that we used to call affectionately tree huggers uh, for those protecting the forest, which to me, you know, don't chop down all the trees, replant. That's smart. Uh, but geez, when you care about a tree more than you do a human life, that's, that's a shame. Uh, priorities, folks, priorities. Uh, but 
you know, do humans play a little toll in gunking up the atmosphere? I think that the carbon dioxide we're putting into the atmosphere from burning fossil fuels is probably contributing to some of our current.